Perfect. So uh, welcome. My name is Nathan. And to introduce the topic for today, it's all about HTML templates. But in the context of populating your e conestoga course with content and you know it's a web platform although and i don't have like data on this but most of the content that i think it's loaded in most um, on average are documents you know powerpoints documents things like that pdfs right a lot of the content that we see in courses is uh, is that sort of thing and that makes sense because that's what instructors have used you know since before platforms like this, and it's what people are most comfortable with creating and repurposing, right, and editing. So that's what we see. But there's always been this potential for more. And, and over the years, I'd say sort of being on both, both ends of a system like this and seeing it um, while, the time, while I was working at D2L and working with lots of clients there and seeing it here you know, at Conestoga College, there's always been a pretty big gap in terms of the type of content that you could create if you were a developer or even had some developer background, right? If you had some HTML, some CSS, some JavaScript experience, then the type of content that you could create really was, it was elevated quite a bit because you know the layouts are built for the web. This is a web platform, right? And so things that become responsive, things that become more interactive, right? Just works better on the web. And so there's always been a gap between, you know, what an instructor who understandably doesn't have a, a web background, right? Um, was able to sort of do on their own without having to go learn code, which just isn't a realistic ask, right? Um, but over the years, the, the gap has sort of become smaller. And so what I'm talking about today, this, this feature where you can use templates in, D2L, it's existed for many years, but what has gotten better, I think, are the, the templates themselves with some nice quality of life things so that if you tried using these five years ago, you know, the frustration was you could start with a nice looking page, but as soon as you started to try to make your edits or mix and match, you know, it would just, it would, things would break very easily. And without understanding that code, there wasn't much you could do about it. And so, you know, it's something I've always kept an eye on. Um, some people have gotten very good at them just on their own over the years. But um, every so often, the, the team, one of the teams at D2L actually um, releases for free a set of nicely built pages designed for instructors. Like it's these page layouts have use cases that instructors need in mind, right? But they've also gotten better about making things less frustrating and less fragile, right? And that's that's why I'm you know excited to to do this workshop again and and show you where that's at and uh, and I I truly think that with this package of templates and uh, what I'll be demonstrating in terms of how you can implement it and start using them and start start designing your own, not just using you know the exact pages they give you, you'll be able to do that without looking at code, without having to even learn a little bit, take a crash course on HTML or whatever, right? That's, that's truly our goal today. So, so I'm excited for it. And I hope that, I hope that you are, um, I, you know, I just wanna say, I appreciate you signing up too. As soon as anyone puts HTML in a, a workshop title, I know that only the, the boldest and bravest will typically sign up for something like that. But uh, maybe if you read on and you saw in the blurb, you know, maybe you don't need code. It's, it's going to be okay. Um, I'm, I'm glad you. Uh, I'm glad you. Uh, you came. So, <clears throat> so um, I have made this shell available to you in Econestoga. You're enrolled as a student. You don't have to go out of your way now and go into it or anything like that. But I just want to let you know it, it, it is here, and how I'll be using this shell is one to share some links with you. I've just posted an announcement. And so uh, the page I'm about to navigate to where I, you can start by downloading a zip package, that link is here as an announcement. Um, I'll copy paste it into Zoom chat right now as well, just um, for anyone who's, again, just wants to bookmark it or save it now and not worry. The other way that I'm going to be using this shell is just by creating pages in it um, as the demonstration for today. And you'll get to sort of, if you ever want to, um, navigate in as a student and just sort of see these pages as a student. So 
it's uh, nothing, nothing crazy. You'll see the pages as I build them. But if you want to experience these pages as a student, you can. Um, after today, this course shell is going to move over into past courses for you. And if you would, even if it's getting in the way there, you can reach out to me and I can remove you too. So um, no biggie, but, uh, but that's uh, how I'm planning to use this. So the, the package that I've alluded to that uh, a team at D2L produces and releases for free, uh, the last time this was updated was just uh, towards the end of last year. And like I said, this is their own version three, but there's been some small improvements you know, in between over the years. And uh, yeah, there's some nice quality of life stuff here. And you'll, you'll see some of it in action. Um, this is a useful page because it does have some, some quick video guides and some, um, you know, some tips and things like that as well. It gives you a some sample screenshots of what the pages look like. I'm not gonna spend too much time. Uh, the main thing is that um, you'll, you'll go here maybe only once, but you'll, you'll definitely wanna download this zip package. That's what I'm going to be demonstrating with today, and uh, and so it, it's it's got the nice sort of like feet, you know nice like um, sort of like some foolproof uh, elements that that make things a little easier. Um, and when I get to implementing them, I'll, I'll obviously I'll, I'll try to highlight those things. There's also some documentation you can always the the setup before you start building a page. There's a few things you do in your Econosoga course uh, to load this and then set it up so that it's usable. And so that some of those steps are also in this guide. So you could always uh, download that and have it for future reference as well. So, I mean, I've already downloaded this. And basically, if I was going to go into a course that is are in and I want to start get into course admin. So an area that you are probably going into all that often. I just got my unstable internet message. So I like to usually give a few seconds. So you navigate into course admin and it's not a space where you'll typically to this space today while we use these templates, but there's one area in particular called manage files. And if you've never had a reason to go here before, um, if you actually do this, even in one of your, your current courses, your live courses, I mean, you'll see by going to course admin and manage files that uh, there's already a bunch of stuff here, right? Even though you're not actively going here, you're probably going into your content area and you're dragging and dropping, or you're using the upload button. Behind the scenes, To get started though, this is also where you're going to need to upload that zip package, right? So this is the one that I had previously downloaded and I've already uploaded this here. Have I unzipped it yet? Let's see. I guess I haven't because it's not unzipped, right? So we have, we have to unzip it after uploading it. And what will happen with, um, with unzipping packages? And this one might even take a couple of minutes. Um, it happens in the background, which is nice. Um, oftentimes, what I find is that with unzipping packages, it has less to do with the actual size of everything in the package and more to do with how many individual files there are in the package. Um, with something like this, although it's not very large, it actually ha has a lot of like supporting documents and stuff that are that are there. Um, and there are some you know individual images and things that are used. Zip happens in the background, which is nice. It means that I can, you know, navigate away. 
and nothing bad is going to happen. Uh, it'll finish on its own. It's not like I've interrupted that. So, you know, I'm in an empty course. I'm in a new course. And well, that's unzipping. And hopefully it's, it's at least part, partly unzipped at this point. Um, what we basically do in this content tool is we change a setting. Now, just like with managed files, like settings, you can always move this around, make it bigger. Um, besides display, which again, nothing I would ever touch, there actually is a section here called content authoring, and it's been here for a while. And what we can basically do is enable HTML templates. Okay, so I'm going to pause here and make a sort of a distinction because the template package that I just downloaded, the, the zip They won't have some of the nice quality of life stuff that I'll, I'm going to point out about these ones. But just to be clear, any web content that you have that you've uploaded and, and put into your managed files could potentially be used as your HTML template. So it's not just that one special zip package that I, that I uh, showed you in the first step, right? So we click enable HTML templates. And then what we do is we have to right is this option for uh, course offering files um, and that's just pointing to uh, the manage files area that we talked about before so if this is already partly unzipped right then uh, and thankfully it has we can already see the brightspace html template uh, folder that i'm in the process of or already finished unzipping right this shows up here because all i really need to do here is point to the location whether it's even done When I say save, the template is ready to use. You know, the funny thing about it is, you know, we've just uploaded something and we changed the setting. And now, you know, so far, absolutely nothing looks different, right? Like there's nothing, there's no new button here that says, uh, okay, great, you know, build your first template, click here to generate a page, right? It's, it's incorporated into, you know, other menus of uh, ma managing your content, um, but it's not super obvious. It's not really in your face here either, right? So let's go back into manage files and we'll see if that unzip is done. It's close to being done, but normally what you'll do is you'll get a um, assets are done, but pages aren't. We'll go back to content. Um, we'll start to get organized for building these pages. One of the things that we're going to do before we start making individual pages, and we're going to want, you know, a week one, a week two here, just so that I can start to like put pages into those things um, and, and get, get building, right? Um, so assume I have, you know, 15 of these. But the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up a hidden module for just us as instructors. Um, and there's several reasons to do this, but setting up this sort of reference folder is going to allow you first and foremost just to actually browse through the various html pages that we just download as a part of this package these are these starting points the starting you know page layouts that are available to us through this template so i'm going to i'm going to call it something like html template uh, template pages and the other thing we're going to do here is we're going to um, hide it. So this is something that you're never going to make available to students. They don't need to go through and look at random pages with placeholder text, right? So if we go back to manage files, still not done unzipping. Let's see, are pages here yet? Yeah, good, pages are here. So it must be close. So one of the tricks for 
taking these web pages that you've un, uh, uploaded and unzipped and actually turning them into content pages that you can view can happen through managed files, right? I'm in managed files right now. And what you'll basically do is you're going to highlight all of these pages. So if I'm browsing through them now, you know, I can see that there's 11 of them and they're sort of numbered with a prefix here. And then I'm gonna click this button that says add content topics. This is gonna to allow me to do this in bulk. I could have done this several other ways in terms of making these into pages I can see in my content and actually view and, and even edit. But this is like, the, I think the fastest way. So I'm gonna click add content. I created that. Uh, select that and that's where I'm gonna place them all. So there was a question in chat, should we be able to enable HTML pages from the settings in any of our courses? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that first set of steps that I showed you where you basically go into content, you go to settings, you check the box that says enable HTML templates, and then you choose the path. That should be available to you, those exact steps in any course where you're an instructor. So courses where you have uh, copy access, courses where you're, uh, um, you know, you're working with the OLC to develop online, you won't have those abilities uh, anywhere that you're an instructor. And if you're looking for a place to try this for the first time, I some shell and call it sandbox too, or you can call it um, Nathan's, you know, template playground, right? And then you can start to, to follow these same steps, upload the zip package and all the things that I'm about to do. Um, so, Okay, fair enough. I, I'm going to try to do a, a bit of a break um, at about the halfway point, like a just a two, two, three minute stretch break. And when we get to that point, um, to the person that was asking about it and not seeing it in your course, um, I'll take a look with you and, and we can figure that out. All right. So, so what I've done is I've made a nice viewable versions of all of the starting point pages. And it's useful just to sort of open them and click through them and see them, like before we even start editing, before we start planning, before we start designing. Like, what do we have? What did we, what did we download? So we have something called blank. A blank page, we've got something called an introduction page, and it has a bit of a splash image behind some text. Things are centered here as well, not too wide, which is nice. We have a couple of paragraphs. We have another thing called module introduction. So numbered ordered list here and different image in the background, right? Kind of a overlap. Of a meet your facilitator page. This has a spot where there's an image and I'm gonna be showing you how with any of these pages, we can change the images. We can of course edit what we need to here. This one in particular, I'll say like might be redundant with something you've already got. If you are one of those people using the new instructional plan, this is kind of already in your instructional plan page um, with your, your profile image. So you don't have to edit it, it pulls your uh, email and things like that. You can input your office hours. We have a basic page. Remember, we started with a blank page. It had a similar banner at the top, although it was a different image. This one just has a little more going on in terms of a couple of uh, levels of headers. It has something that I, I would typically call like a call-out box to, to highlight some important takeaway or something you want your students to see uh, and, uh, and take note of, right? We've got an example of a link, but we save the same logo in the bottom. We keep going through. We have a video lecture. Wrote same kind of header and the ability to put text. From YouTube, but when I provide an example later, you know, YouTube is fine as well. And there are even instructions here, right, on how to replace. Um, I'm going to actually be showing you with Panopto, which is just as possible in terms of 
um, using this page layout and grabbing that Panopto video and incorporating that. And um, and if you're not familiar, is that you know, maybe you've already been sharing videos with your students, but maybe the only way that you've really found to do that has been to just share the link. And then the student is sent off to a video, but all they see is that video, right? And the nice thing about building it into a page like this is that you can add context. You can, you can put your blurb in front of that video. You can add a and provide additional notes and, and set the stage before they click play, you know? And so a page like this is something that you'll maybe decide you want to use quite a bit. Yeah, and if we go next, there's going to be, I believe the next one's okay, conclusion page, right? But different banner image, same logo. We'll go next, I think we're going to see elements. So. You know, that conclusion Now that we've gotten through those set of predefined pages, we also have a set uh, or a page of just elements. Is all of these things that would be too much, and I don't know um, how your students would would even uh, you know parse through all of this, right? But what we're going to see is that when we sit down to actually build something new, we can certainly start from any of those previous pages if they have the general layout that we want. But all of these elements are going to be available to us no matter what our starting point. And so you know, there's um there's this, uh, this block quote which is something that you might see in terms of like a you know inspirational message, a quote from some some subject matter expert on something that you're you're referencing in your course, right? You can cite it here. Uh, different versions of that, a sort of call out box. You want a colorful background. You want something with an icon, right? We can certainly incorporate uh, nicely styled tables, um, even using multiple columns, right, to make the layout of our page more interesting and maybe a bit more engaging. We'll go on the bottom. Um, we also have an image. We also have the right floating to the left um, or, or fully aligned, but still again with the ability to really nicely either caption that or link to something or, or provide a citation um, with within that page, right? So I think there's one more. Yeah, oh, there's two more. There's accordion, which is going to be uh, the first ex uh, example we see where it, it's actually a little bit interactive, right? The student actually clicks to expand these things. And um, yeah, it's just, it's nice for a few reasons. Sometimes you have a lot of information that you want to share because it's all related, but dumping all that as text that the student sees when they load that page is not a great experience, right? And so controlling the, the pace at which the student kind of uh, consumes all of that is really nice. And it's a, it's a simple concept. I mean, no one's gonna look at this and Um, is one of the reasons why you know this is great. Um, the other one is that depending on how you use this, uh, it could be a knowledge check. Like you could have questions here that that uh, ask your student to try to remember something, to try to define something, and the page sort of serves as like a little cue card study page because the student can go here as often as they want, look at that prompt, say, "Oh, do I remember that? Let's see." Um, in my head, I think that's what it is, and then you know, click and reveal the answer. You know. Of, 
avoiding code, which is our goal, means that if you have something that you've imagined for more than six, maybe you just need to split it into two, two sections, or maybe you need to make another new page as a part two, because uh, it's not going to be easy to make more than six um, with the, the methods that I show you. From one to six, we've got you covered um, just out of the box here. And then finally, it's something similar with tabs. So two, you know, three, four, right? And anything more than four gets a little bit, a little bit um, crammed in anyway. So, um, so that is our, that's our pack. That's our bundle. And one of the nice things about this, right, is that I can look at all these and remember what they are. We're going to be able to make new pages, of course, starting from this, but creating a new page at the end of the day. But also having these here in a so remember, after we changed those settings, there wasn't some big new button here that said, make a new page, right? What we actually do to uh, access this is we use the same upload create dropdown that was always here. And one of these options, even if you've never explored it yourself, the blank text page. Nothing ever stopped me from doing that. But what's new now, because we uploaded that zip package and because we changed our settings, is now we have this thing called select a document template. And when I use that dropdown, now I have all 10 of those pages that we just browsed through. That's going to become my starting point if I select any one of them. Right? So as an example, we're going to go blank. Here it is. This is now the blank page as a starting point. I can, of course, make my edits here, right? Something here. I'm going to delete it in a second, anyways. Um, and when I save, if I'm ready, you know, it'll make a new page. I still have that same blank page to start from, but I've made something new now. One of the things that I want to point out early here so that no one has this frustrating experience and not realizing it's the case, every time you change to, uh, or you use this dropdown to select a template, it is going to fully reset what is here. So you will lose anything already on your screen, right? If I go back, like, this is what I want you to avoid. Don't start from a page that already has text on it. You know, my week one introduction, there is some text here. I even have my like unit outcomes listed already, you know, bullet, 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 one, two, three. And now I think, oh, well, that's nice. I mean, I already have my text. Like I wanna drop it into a template. Um, and you're wishfully thinking, well, if I pick that module introduction, it'll like take my text and it'll, no, it's gonna clear your text, anything you've done, and it's gonna put that placeholder text back. So your order of operations here is um, always going to be choose your template, you know, live with the text that is here, and then, um, then start filling in the blanks. And you're, maybe you're copying and pasting from something you already had, or you're typing it out again, right? So let's pretend this is my week one introduction, right? I have a page that I kind of like the layout of for my introduction because it not only gives me a chance to like define what we're covering this week, but also, um, you know, I have my potentially my unit outcomes here. So module introduction, week one, I don't know what it's about. I guess it's about HTML templates. Just so a couple of things that I'm going to do here, and I should be talking this through because. Um, how you're making your edits here is something you, you should also be mindful of. Okay, so I was a little bit a little bit reckless when I was highlighting these things. Um, and by the way, you're seeing me go back and forth using um, undo and redo, which exists here on the toolbar, and you can also use your, your standard um, keyboard shortcuts for. That's going to be very helpful as well. Like in that, thing, I could undo, copy that, and then redo, and now I'm back to my template mode. Um, but so in general, right, like all of this leading the text that you no longer need. And this is the placeholder stuff. You know, I'm going to type something over it, whatever. Um, avoid doing this very, very, ca like very uh, casually, like high. 
I say, yeah, I want to, I want to delete this stuff, right? So I'm going to drag and drag. A lot of the time, it's something like a Word document. You know, that's fine. There's nothing else to worry about. But behind the scenes here, um, just the way that this editor works, it's it's what you see is what you get with an asterisk. You know, it's very easy to accidentally, without knowing it highlight more than you intend. And then when I click delete, I'm potentially deleting. What I would very, very strongly encourage you to do as you're editing these pages is to basically purposefully click at the beginning of a sentence or at the end of it, right? I'll here, I'll go at the beginning and then just carefully use the delete button. Like it takes an extra few seconds. You can always undo if you hold the button down too long, right? But doing that is going to um, help ensure that you never highlight just a little bit too much or a little bit uh, not enough. And, uh, and you know, when you delete it, it makes a mess of things. That's one of those things that again, is just sort of uh, impossible to fully avoid. And there's some nice things they've done with these templates to make it harder for that to happen. But that's that's one of those biggest pieces of advice I can give you, right? Just just click and backspace um, and it takes an extra second or two, but then you're not gonna end up with a broken page and realize it later. And once you've saved this, you know, there's no undoing anymore, right? So we'll do something like this. I feel pretty good about that. Um, if I'm really careful, like I'm gonna not highlight past the, the period. So I'm pretty good with deleting this as a chunk because I, I haven't gone outside of the, the sentence, right? This, uh, this week is all about HTML templates. Right, and maybe that's the title of my week. I'm gonna make sure I don't highlight past there. And then, you know, I've got my uh, learning objectives. Now, this all was placeholder text, and they've released this for free to all institutions anywhere, you know, to anyone who wants it. Um, learning objectives is one way that we could phrase this, but I mean, maybe here at Conestoga College, like we always refer to these as our unit outcomes, right? If we want to try to be aligning with the course outline, as an example, right? And so that's a change that I might make here, right? And uh, yeah, we'll do, we'll, we'll clear this out without doing too much haphazard highlighting. Um, you'll see I've got four items here in this list. Um, the nice thing about this is, you know, it, it is kind of smart. If I go backspace, backspace, and I no longer need four, it's gonna remove it. But if I was at the end of my existing list and I need another one, I hit enter, it'll add it and it'll be in the correct style, right? So, you know, one of the one of the things that we've done so far with HTML templates, download a zip package, right? I'm gonna do this and I'll say we upload zip to manage files and unzip. You know, maybe we modify modify our content settings. And then what else? I'll hit enter so I get that fourth bullet back. We, um, you know, we wanted to create a, uh, a hidden reference module, you know. So if I'm feeling good about this, I am, and I'll come back to talking about images and stuff like that too, I, uh, I can save, I can save and close. I can always come back and edit this page. Remember, I'm making a new page now and um, it now lives on its own. So that I'm not gonna be messing up the original. If I click save and close, we can see like, the, the actual published page, like you'll notice some differences when you're in the what you see is what you get edit mode, right? Because um, it, for instance, has this kind of like overlapping uh, banner um, when it's published, you know, again, as long as I wasn't uh, um, reckless about highlighting and deleting the wrong parts, like it's going to properly snap back into place when the published page is, is viewed. And even though more so it's not like a hundred percent um, faithful view as you're editing here. Um, sometimes it's just you know you'll save and close and see, right? So this is a uh, this is building my first page. But going back to um, a thought I had before, like sometimes you, if I'm going to rebuild this page over and over and over again, right? Like if I'm going to do one of these for every week, you don't have to live with the fact that the template that we downloaded uh, called them learning objectives rather than uh, unit outcomes. And where, where I was starting to talk about this before was that this HTML template um, hidden module, 
is useful not only for viewing them, but also for editing them. Editing these pages here will change the page that you start from when you use that drop down menu. So let me show you what I mean, right? If I go to module introduction and I go to edit HTML, it's how you would edit any page, but these are our starting point pages, right? Remember this had all the placeholder text? Well, I can change this here. I can call this unit outcomes. And if that's the only change that I'm making, because I don't know, like, sometimes they'll have more than four, less than four placeholder text is fine, right? If I save and close on my module uh, introduction page, and now I go back and I'm ready to make that same page now again, but now I'm doing the unit, the, the week two version, right? Just to recap how we would access these templates is after changing the settings earlier, we go to upload, create, create a file. We go to select a document template. This is the one, uh, remember module introduction, right? But now watch what happened because I changed that original. Now I don't have to worry about editing unit outcomes every time, right? Like, so feel free to edit some of those original pages to, to end up with something that, um, yeah, saves you from doing the same, uh, same change over and over. Okay, so this would be my week two. But again, I'm right now I'm making a new page from that, from that same starting point, and that's not a problem. So that is how you would obviously build something that was very similar you know, in nature to one of your starting points. But what I'm gonna talk to you about next are um, other things like these images, right? Just like we didn't have to live with the learning uh, objectives. We don't have to just like live with the banners they pick. Like these are there to show you and they're there to lay out what, uh, what we see, but they're not required. And same obviously with logo. Can you just imagine like you couldn't change this. And so uh, everyone who ever used these templates just had logo in the bottom right. You know? So that's, that's what we're gonna do next. Um, the process is a little bit different when we're talking about you know, changing the template because we're talking about modifying those centrally located files. And so that's what we're gonna investigate right now with this logo. Um, something that I'll show you with any, anything to do with images, right? If I will go back and edit this page or any of the pages, cause they, they all have the logo on it, right? We'll, we'll do that first. So when you're in edit mode, whether you're looking at the banner or in this case, we're looking at the logo, you can learn about um, where that file is and what that file is called by clicking on it. So in this case, we'll click on the logo on the bottom right and click on the, the image icon. And basically here it says image options. I could have clicked on it here as well, I believe, but clicking on the image itself, getting this pop-up menu, clicking on image options. What it does is it tells us where and what this file is. So this is gonna be important because to change this logo everywhere, I don't wanna to have to go into each of those 11 pages plus any of the pages I already made and um, change the, the file, right? Like point it to a new file. So what we're actually gonna do here is we're gonna pay close attention to where this is located and exactly what it's called. We uh, uh, unzip this package and this is the, the folder for that. And then there's a subfolder called assets, a subfolder for image, and then what we're looking at right now is logo.png. Remember, we looked at every page and they all had it, right? And so now that I know where that file is, I'm gonna go back. Change to everywhere. All of our 11 starting pages, and the, the two pages that have already published with it, right? And that's gonna be true for any of these images that are on um, multiple pages. So if we navigate ourselves into uh, course information, back to manage files, yeah. And then we go to the template, we go to assets and we go to image. Remember that's where we, where we've, we found it. And there's a lot of other things here too. And, um, even, you know, we uploaded this and we unzipped it straight away. If you unzip it first on your computer, you can actually start to like browse through what these things are, right? Like, what are these things? Well, there's actually, as it turns out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different banners that are here. Maybe you end up really liking one and saying that's the one, um, but also it just gives you a sense for like what their size is and, and all that, right? Um, there's some other placeholder images that we saw on those image pages. Conclusion image, right? But here's the one, this is logo.png. 
logo.png, this is on my computer. Originally unzipped. So the whole, the whole point is like, you know, you would download your, um, your own logo. I'm just gonna grab this Conestoga logo, right? Uh, this and I'm going to give it logo.png as the exact title. If you end up finding a logo that's not a PNG, you're just, you're going to have to change the image to the second method I show you later, which is just more manual. But um, but basically, if if you can have the same file type, that's going to make our lives really easy because now I can go in this folder, right? I'm going to go upload. Cached and meaning no, no, it already didn't figure it out. But you might have to also like reload your reload your page, maybe clear your browser cache. Don't don't panic if it's not immediately changed. But um, yeah, after refreshing, you know you should see your logo now in its place. This was a page I already made. The same is going to be true for any of those template pages that I had here, right? We'll go to basic page, just look at it. There's my logo, and that's because it was the same file name. Okay, so next let's talk about Banner. Um, when they made this package, they made a decision for better or worse for basically each of these pages to have a different banner. If we take a look at this one, it's like, okay, teapot, you know, uh, notebook, and then we go to another one. That's the splash page, but the next one has, you know, plant, coffee cup. This one is different as well. Actually, this one is the same. That's nice. But then again, it's different. So we've got, you know, keyboard, whatever. So you might be okay with that, or you might have a banner that you want to use on every page. And so whichever of those is the case, you will have to edit some number of these pages because you'll either, you know, use a banner of your own everywhere, or you'll switch it on every page. So it's, you know, it's different, um, whatever the case. But generally speaking, what we would want to do is, um, is change one of our template pages here first, because then when we use that template page, uh, it'll also be changed elsewhere. So let's use, for instance, um, our basic page as an example. Right, right now I'm editing the original basic page because I want eventually for my new banner to be used everywhere. So I'm gonna say edit, edit HTML. And just like before, when we clicked on the, um, when we clicked on the, the logo and then we clicked on the image to learn more about it, We'll do the same thing here with the banner. We click on it, we go to image. And once again, like we can see, this is the path, right? This is the path. And um, we saw that whole folder and it turns out, you know, this one with the, the teacup on the right is, um, is banner, banner three. But let's just assume we went through them all and we really like banner six, right? All you have to do here, because we know that file already exists, is we, we call it banner six. If you ended up uploading a new, banner of your own in manage files, then you would just you know change it to be the whatever file name you uploaded here. And that's fine too. But let's make this one six, right? We'll say save. And now I can see, you know, this is the one I liked. I like the one with the, the, the keyboard or the sorry the, the monitor. So I'll say save and close. Now every time I use basic page one, you know, this is the banner. Let's just say I wanted to use banner six everywhere. I'd have to go into each of these pages, right? We're gonna do this. We'll say edit HTML, click on the image on the settings and then go to banner six save save and close so now my video lecture is always going to have that banner i go to conclusion page that one already had it so what am i missing probably my my blank page maybe i could do this one but it's kind of it's kind of bigger as well so maybe i'll leave it and maybe we'll do this one as well so edit image Options, banner six, save, save and close. Okay, so a few, a few ideas there, right? I mean, 
again, more, all the more reason to sort of create this for yourself first. Make sure it's hidden because your students don't need to see this. They'll be confused if they do see it. Um, but we can start to like modify things so that as we begin to repurpose them, you know, they have the banner that we want already with the logo because it was just the one file used everywhere. It was really easy to change in one place. But for everything else, you know, you're, you're going to want to change that page by page. And uh, even it's true with um, our image samples, which we'll get to maybe after a short break. So it's 148 right now. I want to take like about four minutes to let people stretch. And for anyone who just wants to uh, right now, um, if they haven't already, maybe download that zip package. You can upload it into your sandbox or something. See if you can find those settings and uh, and start to be able to you know generate pages from them as well. A nice little break now to to get you uh, an opportunity to try that. Um, plus, if there's questions, so uh who was it oh you did find it oh okay awesome so at least you found it right we'll take a quick stretch then so at 152 we will regroup and i haven't gotten any more of the internet unstable messages so maybe i'll even switch the video back after the break but we will see you shortly all right we're back so uh what we're going to do next is we're going to here what we're going to do though is we're going to add one of those other dynamic elements right so we saw that there was a page that allowed me to for instance add accordions right these things that are sort of collapsible panels and that doesn't exist yet on my basic page but it's something that we can add right it's not like we have to start from the accordion page if we ever want to use an accordion but here's how to do it and this is where I wish it was less clicks. Like I wish that it was a little bit more seamless. I wish that it was a little bit more, um, you know, built into the workflow. We're going to be able to do it, and with some practice, you'll get very good at this. And I did promise at the beginning you're not going to have to look at code. That's still true, but um, there's a, there's a few clicks to this. So here's how it works. So you're going to actually need to have multiple tabs open, and with multiple tabs, you're going to have one page that we're currently um, building, right? So this is the one I'm building right now in week three, and I've started filling in some text, et cetera. Then in another tab, we have to go to our template. These pages in it. If I want to incorporate an accordion, I actually have to go into this the template page in edit mode. And that's how we copy. We're going to copy and paste. Okay. Again, not super intuitive, but once you see it demonstrated here, if you take this away and you have a, an opportunity to do a bit of practicing on your own, you know, it'll start to it'll start to click. It definitely will. So but we have we can't just view it. We actually have to go into edit mode. So we're going to go to edit and then watch what we what we have here. Let's just say I know I needed to have an Next here, this is one of those quality of life things. They have given you something where you can start your copy with the text above and you end your copy with the text below. And this goes back to something we talked about earlier where when you're highlighting here, it's dangerous because you might be highlighting too much or you might be highlight highlighting too little. Well, they've built this template so that if you're highlighting from the text above and below, you're not missing anything important and then you can just delete the text after you're done. So if I know I want to incorporate an accordion of two, right? I can highlight just this. And again, I'm not clicking over here. I'm, I'm going to click just before my, my first A and just after my last Y. And now I can right click copy or I can go control C, okay? And I go back to that other tab, the tab where I was doing my building. And you, you know, wherever you want to incorporate this, you, you, Make sure your cursor is on a new line. That's where I want to insert, basically. And you know, again, all I did there was like I hit enter and it added a new paragraph for me. And now we very carefully right-click paste. We can't paste as plain text for this because then we'll lose, you know, the, the magic. We, we do a regular paste, so control V would have been fine. And and I've got this accordion. Now, again, remember I told you earlier as well, like the preview mode as I'm building, the what you see is what you get. That's not 100% true to what it looks like after we're published, but it is telling me you know, that I have the title and the uh, 
uh, as a final step, right? Like I'm gonna follow my same advice from earlier. I'm just gonna click at the end of copy. I'm just gonna hit backspace until I've removed it. And I could do the opposite here. I could click at the start and hit delete. Right? Maybe I even wanna leave that space at the bottom. That's fine too. And now I can edit this, right? So copy, control C and paste is control V, right? I see all this right now, but watch what happens when I publish it, right? I save and close. My new dynamic elements page in week three has that same banner on all that was from the template, has my text I changed, and it now has this interactive piece, right? In the middle of my page that my students can kind of click and reveal and, and appreciate. So. So that's, again, you just have to sort of trust it when you're in edit mode because you don't see that, that stuff moving, but, but we were able to edit the text that we needed to. Um, this is where, like, if you change your mind now that you've got two and you wanted to add a third one, you just you kind of just can't. Like, you're gonna have to go back here and say, actually, you know what? I just need to kind of highlight a, a new version with three. Um, so again, like not, not perfect. And, I, and there are certainly things I wish were smoother, but uh, yeah, if you're planning ahead and you know what your page is, and how many you need, then uh, you can absolutely do that, right? So that's that's an accordion. If I um, uh, if I wanted to make another page like this, I could. Let's just say after I made a page like this, I decide I um, I also want it to be basically a uh, like a template page, right? Let's say modules that has accordions as well as this like call out box thing. I'm always gonna do this, right? Um, that's something we can do. If we um, and actually let me let me do this uh, from one of the original pages. I think that'll be a bit cleaner. So do like mix and match version of a, of a page that I plan to reuse. And maybe it has a, an accordion, maybe it even has something else, right? So let me show you what I mean. Let's start again from basic page. I'm going to, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a new things here already. I'm going to make a new page here and I'm going to use an existing page, but then build onto it. So we're going to say basic page. Now remember, and I think I still even have it copied. Yep. And I just paste it again. Here's my accordion. Oh, I still have to delete this very carefully. And we'll do the same thing here. But I know, for instance, I want to have, you know, these two, uh, two accordion panels. And, but then editing um, something from my elements page. Let's go to uh, edit HTML on my elements page. What else might I put here? Oh, maybe, maybe I want some columns at the bottom, like maybe I have a next step and then something else right at the end of every page. Um, so I'm going to do a very similar thing where I'm going to very carefully just highlight only what I need just before the first letter, just after the last, and then I can control C or right click copy. And I go back onto this and maybe again at the end of every uh, of my page here. Let me, it's not letting me hit enter. There we go. I can paste this two panel thing. And I would very carefully delete this. And I would very carefully delete that. But at this point, I have no problem with editing my, you know, um, this is my last week, next week, or something, right? Don't forget, we did next week, we will be learning about blank. Right? Maybe this is something you like to have as a, this could be the conclusion page. Remember, there was a conclusion page in that list. If that's not the layout that you want and you wanna have something like this, this could be our, our new conclusion page, right? Because what I'm doing right now is I'm building a new page that has mixed and matched elements in it. But because I'm building it first in my HTML template pages section, yeah, you have to change the location before we save it. So we were making a new page, right? Um, for building within week one and building in week two, I didn't really bother with changing the location because I was just making a new page and those exist wherever they exist. But if, as, a, as an important final step, 
if you're building a new template page that you plan to reuse, before you save it, you want to go to change path. Right? If that wasn't wasn't already the case, so it could have just been like this. If you click change path, it could have been somewhere else. But you basically want to put it into pages, and that's where we, you know, all those existing pages were unzipped to uh, to start from. So we select that path, new conclusion page, yeah, and then we'd say save and close. It was added right as a as the final of this this unit, right? And I might move it up just because I can, but what we're going to see is that it, it did make it available. I mean, right, if I wanna go make a new week four conclusion, I go to create a file, week four conclusion, now in my drop down, it's here, but it's at the bottom because it's doing this alphabetically. Like, uh, yeah. So if we wanted this to show up at a different spot, we would actually have to go to manage files and change the file name of that thing, which, which we can certainly do, right? If we go to course admin, manage files, we go find that page that we just made, right? Notice how we have these other pages like week one introduction, week two introduction. Those are the ones I was building as one-offs. Um, when you save a new template page, it has to be located in uh, template pages. And we can see at the bottom, I have something called new conclusion. Well, if I want and I think if we reload this, yeah, it's just after. You know, that's how the sorting happens. It's a small thing. You might just live with it at the bottom, but uh, but notice now when I go to create a new page, if that's the one that I wanted to choose from, now it's here, right? But notice that all the stuff I just added to it, including an accordion of two, including a panel left and right, you know, that's always the starting now for this page. So if, if that's something you were going to reuse, now you can. We'll do. Uh, an example with an image, and then we'll do an example with uh, with video. Um, and then I have a, a short uh, um, little mini lesson on design, just kind of like some nice some nice tips about design, uh, so that you can think about uh, laying out your pages um, in a in an appealing and, and effective way. So we'll go to create a file, and uh, we'll do the video example because um, if we take a look at this drop down, there's a nice pre-built page with video lecture, right? So I can start from my video lecture page. And in this particular case, like it had a placeholder video. It also had all this text. This, this is kind of like useful for you, but you might not need it, you know? And so you can very carefully highlight what you need to or, um, you know, backspace for a while and get rid of this. But you might still have, you might still wanna have something, you know, that your students do after watching the video. Like, you, you know, that's why this text could still be really useful, right? After watching, um, please reflect on the following. I know the video that I'm about to add is a, has a cute little dog. So um, what is the dog's name? Is it a good name? Does the dog enjoy eating the carrot? This is like weird spoilers about what this video is. Would you feed the dog something different? Okay, um, and now uh, I'll actually add that video. So, and the other thing is too, like this is a little bit small. As you're editing, you can always like make things bigger, drag them in the corner. So, um, kind of similar to what I'm giving you advice about editing text, I say, you know, click just where you need and then hit backspace or hit delete. It's gonna be the same thing with this video. Um, they actually recommend like you click on the video and pause it and now it's like, you know that for sure that you're on the video and then you click just before it. I can't even actually see a cursor here, but notice my, my mouse pointer is the kind of like the text select a, a spot um, mode. And now I'm gonna hit delete. The most important thing is here, like if you've done this right, the the space is still here 
and your cursor is still here, um, and that's you want to not, not touch anything else basically because if you click somewhere else at this point, you might not get the cursor back to where it needs to be. If that's the case, I would undo and then like delete again, right? And get the cursor here. I'm not clicking again on this page until I'm ready to basically paste. Um, so uh, in a separate tab, once again, you would you know go into Panopto. And uh, if you've not used Panopto, then it's just gonna be very similar for YouTube where you go to share, you, uh, you generate the embed code. Uh, and while I'm finding some video to share here, can we combine an ad in the Econ Soga instructor tools like the YouTube creator or the accordion or timeline? Um, well, you can use all those tools and you can publish those into your course wherever you want. You can't combine like styling wise with anything in these templates. So when you build a new page, you'll be starting from one or the other. Uh, and then the look and feel of that page is, will just be what it is, unfortunately. So. There's no way to kind of apply a single style to these templates and also to the um, instructor tools that you may have discovered elsewhere. Um, so they can be mixed and matched in the sense that you could be publishing from either into your course, but they, they will have a different look. You know? So you can't, for instance, have the banner and, and logo from the pages I just showed you uh, and incorporate that with the, the, uh, the, the YouTube Plus or the, the timeline or anything from those other tools. So I'm gonna to go to browse, Costoga. I have a fake course here, which I will hopefully find. There we go. So here's a video. Uh, surprise, it's a, it's a dog eating a carrot. And so in Panopto, um, there's multiple ways you can share and, and you may have already been doing this. You might just grab a link and share it. There's a way in Econostoga where you can build a whole page that's just the video. But the benefit of what I'm showing you now is that you can have a page with the video in the middle and you're adding the stuff above and below it, right? So if we go to share, and what you'll basically do is you'll click on, on embed and you're gonna copy the embed code. You can decide, for instance, if it auto plays, maybe I do want captions, but I don't need the title or the logo. Um, and maybe I don't even want them to be able to click away. So I'm just gonna show the captions. And then we copy embed. And basically here, right, uh, oh, I went over, back on that original page and I haven't clicked anywhere else on this page. So my cursor is still hopefully like flashing where it was. Um, what we end up doing is we use this insert stuff button, click insert stuff, and we basically add embed code. You'll notice that there's a, there's a Panopto option here. You'll notice that there's a YouTube option here. I actually think you'd always be better off doing what I just showed you, which would be to, copy the embed code yourself, and then you click on enter embed code and just paste it. Um, it's a little bit less dependent on those integrations while allowing it to search properly and stuff. Go to the source yourself in another tab, whether it's YouTube or Panopto, copy this and you'll know you've copied it if you start with a triangle bracket and end with a triangle bracket, right? Click next and it previews it for you and then click insert. So now I've got my video right in the middle of this page. When I click save and close, I, uh, I, you know, it's playable. Lots and lots of nice benefits of Panopto. Like I had the ability to not allow students to click off of the, off of the video. If, if, if you had a YouTube embed, you couldn't stop that. So you built it onto this nice page with some reflection questions at the bottom. But if it's YouTube, your student can still just click on the YouTube logo and go to YouTube. And now they're not reading this anymore, right? And they're also being distracted by all the recommended videos and stuff. Um, so, and you know, Panopto does other things. You can build in, uh, you can build in an inline quiz that pops up. You can build in, um, you know, other other sorts of things. It automatically does its captioning. It automatically allows students to take notes and things like that. So that's totally an aside. This isn't a workshop about Panopto, but um, but I do recommend it if you haven't explored it yet. Um, tons and tons of nice benefits. I'm really glad we got it. So that's the video page. Um, next, we'll do uh, an image page. And remember, like these starting points were not always meant to be like, if I ever have an image, I have to use the image sample page, right? When we looked at accordions and when we looked at other elements, the whole point of this is just so you can copy a, an, a, a part of your page and paste it into your existing one. So if I go and I make a week five here and we go to make a new page, 
again, that page could start from the, the, the basic page, right? Even if I don't have an image here, I could add an image here because I'm gonna make my space. I'm gonna go back to my other tab and I'm going to go into edit my image sample because we always have to be in edit mode to copy and paste an element. That's just not super intuitive, but you'll, you'll get in the habit of, of remembering that. Um, so I get to decide, I mean, do I want my image aligned on the left? Do I want my image aligned on the right? Something else, I'll go with the image left. So I wanna be careful to copy just before the start and just after the end. And I'm gonna control C or I can right click somewhere down here and say copy. And now back on that page where I was building, right? I go paste. Now I've got this floating image. So the layout is here. You know, I always need to remember to do this very carefully and do this very carefully. Maybe I add some space because I like it. So the image is here. Now changing the image, right? This is just like, or similar to what we would have done with the banner. Um, but the difference is like with, with the banner, remember we kind of went into like edit mode of the image and we, um, we, we changed the like path, file path. Um, with something like this, the image can be almost any size. We can basically just uh, carefully delete this image and insert a new one, right? And I'm gonna show you about resizing after the fact. The banner I did differently because it kind of has to be its own size. But, um, but if, you, if you click on this, right? And I'm just gonna delete it very carefully. And, and once again, like not gonna click away. My cursor is where it needs to be. I don't have the space the right size, but that'll actually fix itself. And then what we do is we use this insert image button. And the reason that we want to insert the image like this is also because like you're putting a new image in, it's going to prompt you to add alternative text. And for accessibility, that's really important, right? So I'm going to add my Panda image. And you have to be mindful of anyone who's viewing this page who might um, be non-sighted and using a screen reader or something like that. So this is where you would describe it, right? So Panda in its natural habitat, probably about to take a nap, you know, whatever it is that you'd want the, the student to take away from this image, keeping in mind, like that text doesn't even show up for a person who's just looking at it, but a screen reader, for instance, would, right? So if I go in here and I uh, notice it's big, right? It's like, it's not even floating to the left anymore, but that's just because this image happened to be a lot bigger. Now that I've inserted it, if I resize it back down to what it was, right? Or something smaller, the the structure that we've copied here which is what is making it float to the left in a nice little box it means that i could for instance also change this text you know panda image courtesy of national geographic right this is this is kind of like the payoff of doing that copying and pasting because now i don't have to worry about um yeah doing anything fancy to get this image to stay here with the text and it's gonna start a new paragraph and start a new paragraph so that's um, kind of that last example there. Of course, I have to give the title all about pandas. And you know, obviously the rest of this text I would change too, but I've shown you a few examples of that already. Um, let me just see if there's anything else I wanted to cover before I show you that design video. And if there's any questions, of course, you can fire them away. Um, perfect, okay, so. I have this video that I've found um, and then we'll watch this and then we will we'll have some closing thoughts and I'll send you on your way to hopefully play around with these uh, pages a little bit. And if you have a chance, that's uh, something that I'd recommend you try to do sooner rather than later, just because then you'll you know, kind of like lock in what you've uh, learned here, doing a little bit of editing, kind of remembering to be careful and stuff like that. So I think I need to do one or two things here. I need to go into Zoom and say share sound. Um, this is a five minute video, it's just about design. Keep in mind, this is a video about a person talking very broadly and generally about graphic design. So some of these things are a little bit beyond what you have control over using these templates, but um, some of them you can, like some of them you can be very, very mindful of. And it's, I think it's just helpful. I don't think anyone should ever necessarily um, be handed a, a tool that involves layouts and involves different design decisions without being given some, you know, some best practices and things to think about 
when it comes to uh, when it comes to web design, page layouts, and things like that. So I'll I'll play this for you. It's five minutes long, and then we'll all share some final thoughts when we're back. Hey everyone, welcome to Filter Grid. You can't call yourself a graphic designer just by opening Photoshop and drawing some shapes. Graphic design has rules or guidelines that help designers create an image that conveys the intended message. These basics of graphic design are second nature to experienced designers, but they're critical for beginners to learn as soon as possible so they can avoid the most common design mistakes. Here are some of the most critical tenets of design and how you can use them. White space. Don't cram your design full of content. Leave white space or negative space so your core components stand out. have to be this minimalistic, but it shows the importance of negative space. You need to let your designs breathe so that people can actually notice what you want them to notice. Fonts. Fonts can make or break a design, and with so many cool fonts out there, it can be tempting to use a ton of them. But designs are best served with no more than two, or maybe three, fonts. There are a lot of wild fonts out there, and some can work in the right situation. But in general, you should use easy to read fonts that all work together. Don't use a techie looking font with a handwritten script next to it, because that will probably look a bit unusual and confuse the intent of your design. Colors. Much like with fonts, it's easy to get carried away with using colors. Use one to three main colors in your design and another one to three accent colors. A great resource for beginners is to seek out websites that can generate color palettes based on one or two starting colors. This way you can be sure that the colors you Alignment. Elements such as text should not be randomly placed. You should align elements with each other in most cases, such as centering different text titles. Don't just place your text and other elements randomly. There needs to be some sort of intentional aspect to it. The easiest way is to center all of your elements within the image, but it's not the only way. Text can be aligned to a horizontal or vertical line at any point. Breaking your alignment helps a specific element to stand out from the rest. makes a big statement It can give your designs additional depth. Texture is a sense of feeling and touching. It can make certain elements stand out as lifelike or three-dimensional. Organic textures from nature can make a big impact on viewers. Texture can be rough, smooth, and everything in between. Balance. A balanced design balances the design element, so there is equal weight and symmetry. That being said, there are creative reasons to create an unbalanced design. Creating something symmetrical is fairly easy. Just center your subject on a simple background. You can have an image that is balanced down the center, or out from a radial point, or even balanced with a repeating pattern. Breaking balance is a creative choice. An unbalanced image can evoke an emotion, such as uncertainty. Contrast Contrast helps design elements stand out from each other. If you want elements to blend, use low contrast. When you want something to stand out front and center, use high contrast. Contrast can be accomplished through color, size, font, texture, and alignment. Hey, those sound familiar. To create a focal point. The goal is for an important element of your design to stand out, such as the movie or event title on a poster. Focal point. The focal point is the focus of your design, and the eye should be drawn to it through other design elements. Keep it in mind, and don't distract from it with other elements. Using elements like contrast or deviating from your alignment can create a focal point in your designs. The focal point will draw the eyes and attention of viewers. Just make sure you're selective with what you highlight. If everything is emphasized, then nothing is emphasized. Hierarchy. Hierarchy refers mostly to text and is about the scale and importance of elements. Larger elements are the ones that will garner the most attention, so it's important to understand how to structure information. A normal hierarchy would include a shorter title that stands out, followed by subheadings, then even smaller details. area or connecting them through a consistent shape or color. Proximity is the art of grouping related items and distancing unrelated ones. This helps viewers understand what information is relevant and which may not be. For example, you wouldn't want your business card to scatter your contact information all around the card. Instead, your email, phone number, and title should all probably be stacked near each other since they're closely related. These are just 10 of the basics of graphic design, but there is so much more to learn. Like any skill, you will get better at design through practicing good habits. Check your practice designs to see if they're incorporating these basic elements. You can also run your drafts by a more experienced designer so they can see if you're on the right track. Until next time, we'll see you in the next FilterGrade video.
All right. So yeah, I also I've linked that video to you um, in the course shell on the homepage if you uh, want to grab that. I'll paste it into the Zoom chat here as well. So just a couple of um, things to sort of recap from that when it, when you're thinking about design, when you're choosing to mix and match, and when you're using these templates, I think to their fullest. There's a few of those design, uh, you know, design techniques that were mentioned in the video that I think do apply. You know, you don't have a lot of control over color, but when they were talking about hierarchy, right? And if we take a look at the uh, elements page or even the basic page, um, in smaller subheaders. And I think using those with intention can, can really help to structure content, right? Um, it also helps to create some white space. It helps to you know, draw and focus on, um, on breaking up related, related bits and pieces, right? So you know, spacing also matters and you can add spacing as you're building. Like it's okay to leave an extra gap between two paragraphs or between a header and the, you know, and, and, uh, or the previous element and a new header or something, right? Um, they talk about balance and we look at some of those elements, one of them even included the like the sort of column to column view, um, depending on whether you're presenting two related ideas rather than just always having paragraphs stacked on each other, you know, and sometimes imbalance is, a, is an actual technique, right? Where something has a lot of text and there's a lot going on and then something is very simple. And maybe that simple thing is meant to be, you know, um, almost in a way more of a focus because it is uh, imbalanced, right? So you can definitely play around with those things. The other thing that they mentioned was contrast, and that's from the perspective of a person trying to just purely design. Um, whenever I hear contrast, you know, I think in our context, especially in education and, and with um, being very mindful of you know, accessibility guidelines, like high contrast is needed <laughs> to, to be accessible, right? So don't think about using like super medium shades to try to like be style stylized, right? And, so the only other point about that is, and, and I've also I've linked you to this, but um, this is just a reminder that as you're building web content um, using these templates, there is a accessibility checker that you can that you can um, take advantage of. And one of the things that it'll look for is that all of the images have that extra text that we talked about adding, right? And that's one of the nice things about using that insert image button for all, all the things except for maybe banner and logo, right? Um, in the body of the page, if you're inserting an image, it should have that alternative text. And you should be using the proper header structure because not only does that communicate visually about the hierarchy, there's, there's semantic value in that even to something like a screen reader, right? So, so that stuff matters, right? And then color contrast. So not that you can change colors really in these templates, but if you are playing around with a different font color, and those are all toolbar options, um, you want to avoid it if it's harder to see uh, based on, on certain accessibility needs. So, so some takeaways there. And, um, and again, hopefully uh, this has given you a decent starting point for exploring. There's not going to be any substitute for experience for this, right? So if you have an opportunity to start to play around with it, and even if it's just building a couple of pages, you know, I kind of like was modeling that there, like, hey, you're gonna go through and do a bunch of pages every week. Like that maybe is not at all where you start. If you just have a couple of pages in mind that you wanted, especially using maybe the accordions or tabs where you think it helps to, to block and chunk content and make that uh, a little bit more easy for your students to consume, um, then you could start there, right? And just have these available to you so that if you have a need in the future, rather than upload a document or rather than you know rely on the same PowerPoint slide, you could potentially reformat some of that information. And you know, there's, there's pros and cons to everything, but uh, it certainly, I think, can help with engagement and, uh, and getting your students involved. So thanks so much for coming out. And uh, I'll be, like I said, sharing this video. So some of you could always potentially go back for or, or share with uh, any colleagues who you think might also be interested. And uh, in general, you know, with Econostoga related things, um, there's the Econostoga email, which is just econostoga at conostogac.on.ca. But we also have our virtual drop-ins Monday to Friday. That's 10 to 11 in the morning, 2 to 4 in the afternoon. You could drop in and talk to us about templates, right? Um, you, could, uh, you could let us know how that's going, or you could uh, ask for a, a quick refresher on uh, changing those settings for the first time, or any of that good stuff. So 
Amazing. Well, thanks for showing up. Hopefully, if you have another workshop, uh, sign up for this afternoon in the three o'clock slot with Text for Teaching. Hopefully, you enjoy. And if you already checked out some other things on Tuesday, hope you enjoy those as well. And if you happen to be around in a couple of weeks um, during E3, um, whatever you sign up for there, I hope you enjoy. I'm doing a couple of different workshops at E3, but also related to Econestoga. So I might see some of you there. You're, of course, welcome. But uh, that's it for me. Have a great rest of your day. Great long weekend coming up as well.